Zelda. Created by Shigeru Miyamoto in February of 1986, The Legend of Zelda has had several different looks over the years. Like this one. Or this one. Or this one. Do you remember when I looked like this? Squad alive! In total, there's 20 mainline Zelda games and way more spin-offs. Put a 10-year-old in green pajamas and tell him to go kill a minority and suddenly you have one of the highest selling game franchises in history. Now, these games have been ranked, unranked, and judged to the ends of the earth. We know that Ocarina of Time is God's gift to man and every time somebody says, and the faces of evil, a family's firstborn drops dead in South America. So I don't want to rank these games on quality or being fun. No, instead I'm going to be ranking these games purely based on aesthetic. A game can be good, a game can even be great, but that doesn't mean that it's incredibly aesthetic. If a game has aesthetic, you can feel it in your bones, which one day will paint the earth as we all return to dust. These include things like art style, soundtrack, and setting. However, with this comes caveats. I'll only be playing games that received an English release on consoles that I can reasonably access. So to all of my Zelda no Densetsu Kamigami no Triforce fans for the Barcode Battler 2, I, I'm sorry, that's not really a thing that I can do. I'll also be playing games in which you play as either Link or Zelda in Zelda-style games. So no Satellaview, Tingle's Rosie Rupee Land, or Pit Cross. I also won't be playing the Four Swords games because those both require a GBA link cable and friends, of which I have neither. And finally, I'll only be playing spin-offs slash remakes that make a notable change to the base game's aesthetic. This leaves us with this list of 23 games to be sorted into six different tiers. Starting with Come For My Eyeballs, moving down to Arby's, IGN, 7 out of 10, C tier. I wouldn't kill myself, and finally Super Mario Sunshine, because I'm a hater and you can fight me about that in the comments. So without further ado, let's judge some books by their covers and rank every single Zelda game based on aesthetic. The Legend of Zelda for the NES was foundational for Zelda as a series. It introduced mechanics, items, and characters that would define the series for years to come, and yet none of that matters. It looks like piss. C tier. I think the aesthetic idea behind the first Zelda game is present, but I don't think it could be fully realized due to the limitations of the hardware at the time. But what I said earlier isn't completely invalid. This game did establish things like music that would go on to greatly affect later titles. Zelda 2 on the other hand, <laughs> What the fuck is this? Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link starts out incredibly strong with a title screen that I would probably put among the best title screens ever visually. This looks great only for you to actually start playing the game. A Dragon Quest Overworld 2D platforming slash combat encounters this guy who says I am error, which isn't a mistake, and that's his fucking name. Now, this game reeks of 80s RPG aesthetic, but at the time, that's just how games were. The goal atmosphere they were going for when making this game was, let's make a game, that plays. This game has zero aesthetic, except for the fact that this might be one of the most aesthetic title screens I've ever seen, and thus, I wouldn't kill myself. A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past is the Zelda game. It is one of the definitive games for the Super Nintendo. It perfectly utilizes the console's 16-bit graphics without overstepping its abilities, Star Fox, or impacting the player's experience, Star Fox. A Link to the Past perfectly encapsulates and established what the Zelda aesthetic is come from my eyes. Also, Star Fox, Super Mario Sunshine, Link's Awakening. Everything I said about A Link to the Past applies to Link's Awakening, preferably DX, the one for the Game Boy Color. Game Boy games had this habit of being like a secondary option. Well, you can't play Super Mario World, but you can play Super Mario Land. The falling is weirdly fast. Everything's all fucked up. We haven't made a Mario game for the Game Boy before. Link's Awakening is not that. This is a fully fledged balls to the wall Zelda game with music and characters and all that. Shit. It's also a one of a kind Zelda game because this Zelda game has no Zelda, no Hyrule, no Triforce. And its island aesthetic doesn't succeed in spite of that, it thrives because of it. Arby's, and you'll you'll see why only Arby's later. Now it's time for the fun games. Link the Faces of Evil, Zelda the Wand of Gamelon, and Zelda's Adventure for the CDI. This is where we delve deeper into the debate of intentional aesthetic versus these games are funny as shit. When you look at a game like, say, Mega Man X4, which is notorious for its awful voice acting. Ah! No, this isn't happening. There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? Part of the reason this is so funny is because look at it. The other reason is because these god-awful cutscenes conflict with the atmosphere and the aesthetic established in gameplay. Mega Man X4 is also going in Super Mario Sunshine. I currently have two games in the Super Mario Sunshine tier, neither of which are a Zelda game or Super Mario Sunshine. But what if instead of clashing with these terrible cutscenes, 
The entire game was like this. You can make me do the duck walk. Cutscenes? Horrifying. Gameplay and controls? Atrocious. Console? Fucking look at it. While the aesthetic isn't good, it's consistent, hilarious, and strong. So Link the Faces of Evil and Zelda the Wand of Gamelon will both be enjoying a nice roast beef sandwich at Arby's. Zelda's Adventure, on the other hand, is entirely live action. This game is fucking horrifying and not in a good or funny way. Mario Sunshine, immediately. First Zelda game to receive a rating of Mario Sunshine. I sound like I'm having a stroke. Okay, Ocarina of Time. This is one of the games that I struggled the most with. Where most Zelda games don't commit to a single aesthetic strong enough, Ocarina of Time commits to so many that I don't feel like I can point to one and be like, ah yes, this is the aesthetic of this game. Because of that, I don't know if it's making my eyes come or making me not want to kill myself. C tier. I'm kidding. Mostly because my friend would kill me. I'm gonna put it in high IGN 7 out of 10 because while this game has too much going on for me to clearly point to an aesthetic, it did define what the Zelda aesthetic would be for years to come, similar to how A Link to the Past did. Majora's Mask. Unlike its predecessor, Majora's Mask has an easily identifiable aesthetic, which is existential dread and unavoidable looming demise. And it plays on these themes hard. Every character interaction, even one of the core mechanics, are fueled by this hanging knowledge of imminent death unless you stop it. While I've had my problems with this game in the past, the vibes are off the charts. Very few Zelda games have an aesthetic or atmosphere as palpable as Majora's Mask. And my eyes are feeling real cummy. Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. The Oracle games take a ton of assets and items from Link's Awakening, but use them in a way that feels like it's trusting the player to have the cognition of a semi-competent kindergartner. However, the music makes me wish I was deaf. And the dungeons aren't really themed around much other than the item you get from them. However, the rest of the game is so strongly themed around the changing of either the seasons or the ages. So because of that, they will be receiving an IGN 7 out of 10. Wind Waker. I like Wind Waker. I think it's incredibly inventive. It changed a ton about Zelda as a whole, and it has so much identity. The thing that's most identifiable as different is the beautiful cartoon art style. Mostly beautiful. This is a big leak about myself. I do not like the way the characters look in Wind Waker. With the exception of Grandma because she's adorable and Beetle because he's Beetle, everyone is ugly. Everything else is beautiful, especially the wave and wind animations. But when the ugliest thing in the game is the character you play as, it kind of sours it a little bit. Arby's. The Minish Cap. Minish Cap was the last Zelda game to be made in collaboration with Capcom following the Oracle games. Minish Cap expanded on what the Oracle games did right and improved on what they did wrong, adding original assets, a banger soundtrack, and bringing back the themed dungeons. Throwing the big tiny honey I shrunk the kids aesthetic on top of it, it's solid. Arby's. Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess was my first time experiencing the classic phenomena of everyone on the internet is a member of the fickle herd and have no ability to form their own opinion, so they constantly change with the hyper-aggressive mentality of the masses. Or the Man of Steel effect. Everyone loved this game when it came out, and then they hated it and thought it was bad, and now they love it again. Twilight Princess was the first rated T game and first Zelda game that I ever played. I got lost in the first dungeon and couldn't figure out what to do. But it is undeniable that this game probably has some of the heaviest aesthetic of any Zelda game. It's dark, it's gritty, it has a gimmick that would get ripped off by a Sonic game. When I think of a Zelda game with a lot of aesthetic, I think of this one. Come for my eyeballs. Phantom Hourglass. This is my quick synopsis slash hater opinion. Phantom Hourglass looks like a less interesting Wind Waker and nothing about it stands out to me as super noteworthy. Mario Sunshine. Spirit Tracks. Very similar to Phantom Hourglass, except this one goes hard in the paint with trains and I respect that. C tier. Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword has a ton of aesthetic. It's just not always a very good aesthetic. Fee. Skyward Sword goes for a mysterious ancient tech aesthetic but it's also supposed to be the first game in the timeline, and I don't like how those two things go together. But I adore the art style, music, and setting IGN 7 out of 10. A Link Between Worlds. A Link Between Worlds reuses the map from A Link to the Past, but this time with a new 3D art style and a very clear painting-based aesthetic. However, I do wish it was used a lot more beyond just being an incredibly clever puzzle mechanic. C tier. Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors is weird. It uses models and characters from every game with an art style that just doesn't look right. Impa fucking scares me. I don't really feel like anything jives together. I wouldn't kill myself. I'm changing this in post. You cannot stop me. I'm a god. Triforce Heroes. Triforce Heroes tries really hard with the fashion aesthetic in Hytopia, 
but similar to A Link Between Worlds, it falls just short of that aesthetic being all-encompassing. That atmosphere doesn't permeate the entire story and game like it does in something like Majora's Mask. IGN 7 out of 10. Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild does so many things right. The game is fantastic and beautiful, and I would make sweet, sweet love to it if I could. However, due to just how open this open world is, it's easy to get lost in the world itself but not so much in the aesthetic and atmosphere. IGN 7 out of 10. Cadence of Hyrule. Come for my eyes. Do I need to explain that? Look at it. Link's Awakening Remake. This is why the original game is chilling at Arby's. No longer bound by the limitations of the Game Boy, the Link's Awakening Remake perfectly showcases what this game's aesthetic was meant to be. From improved music to match this game's theming, improved art style, both in gameplay and in cutscenes, this soup, this game, certainly made these eyes come. And finally, Tears of the Kingdom. By making Tears of the Kingdom story less open-ended and more incentivized, it was able to hammer home that mysterious ancient tech aesthetic way more than Breath of the Wild was. It's a choice that made some people hate the game, but to me made the aesthetic and the game as a whole that much more powerful. Arby's. So that's the list. Is it entirely accurate? No. Is it entirely fair? No! Did I entirely play all of these games before making incredibly divisive and judgmental statements about them? No! So tell me in the comments, is there a game that I ranked unfairly? Did the game that hit you the absolute most with its aesthetic end up at fucking Arby's? If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing, I do this weekly, and click here to watch a video where I talk about the incredible storytelling in Tears of the Kingdom.